All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, storytelling through animation is an art form that has been um, around for centuries. It involves using visual sounds and music to create a narrative that, um, that can be understood by the viewers. Now, animation allows telling stories in ways that would otherwise be impossible and is an excellent method to associate with the audience in a fun and innovative manner. In recent times, animation has been employed in various fields to enhance knowledge, marketing, advertisement, and age group from infant to adult. So today we're asking, what is the future of animation in storytelling? And of course, how will it impact our children? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also thread us at We Show Africa. All these people that refuse to enter, you will tread it by force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, um, we're all tailors now. We're all tailors. Mm. Okay, so I mean, what's your memory about cartoons, animation? You know, because I remember that everything that I know to about maybe um, animals and so many things, right? It's it's childhood, growing up, watching, you know, watching all those classics, right? Tom and Jerry, Powerpuff Girls, Voltron, Ahazin. Defender of the universe, there's nothing, you know, yeah. but I, and I see the evolution of animation. It is, I mean, when I watch The Lion King, the 3D, I've been mean, a 5D, I've been mean, a 7D, that one, it's like you'll be seeing the hair of the lion. Like, okay. the evolution of the animation industry has grown so much. And for some strange reason, I actually am more captivated in stories that involve animation than okay. just real life acting. I don't know how it is. I mean, my son recently came back home, right? And he just said, Mommy, can we watch this movie? I bought it for, for him. I be, we bought it for him as a baby. Joseph the Dreamer. Uh -huh. Right? We bought that thing. I remember that CD. We watch and watch and watch out. So we're just scrolling through Netflix and he saw um, Joseph, mm. you know. He said, Mommy, can we watch it again? I said, but you watch it. He said, yeah, I just want to watch it. And trust me. It felt like it, I was watching the game, like we were watching the game for the first time. So just imagine how, you know, especially when you say oh, children are having difficulty and all of that, just doing it the right way. And I'm, I'm so thankful for the guests that we have today because I've always wondered when will we get it right. But we're complaining about how they're infusing a lot of things that are not our culture into animation. Mm -hmm. Who are the better options? Because now, if you look at some animations, you just want to... Please, okay. just go back to where you're coming from. But now you're seeing that, Niger especially in the Nigerian space, they are taking animation to the next level, which oh is really goodness. exciting for me. I wish I had babies, but I don't get toddlers again, but do something for us. <laughs> well, let me hear your thoughts quickly. It's for, it's for everybody, everybody, right? Everyone, yeah. yeah I, it's a very powerful medium. Mm. I think it, it's, it, it started off, uh, for me, animation is the original green screen. It's the, you know, it was the first place where escapism was really, really real. You know, when we were watching the equivalent of fantasy movies back then, if you remember, um, oh, what's the name of that movie now? The one with the flying dragon that looked like a, a stuffed dog. <laughs> um, not, was it, not Fantasia, no, not Fantasia. What was it called? The, 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 the city was called Fantasia, but I can't remember the name of the movie. We'll go find out. The you princess. Know, some of us are doing your age. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was yes, she went that. I was going to that. So, um, <laughs> we will look for it. It was, it was this, I, like, literally, it was the fantasy movie for kids at, in, like, in the 80s. Early 80s, yeah. Um, but the, the thing for me with animation is, like you said, it's very emotive. We all have these memories of the particular movie of your childhood mm -hmm. and when you're talking about the stories that are being told animation was also a very powerful medium for teaching kids so we don't have it in a lot of the cartoons they show today but in the 80s most of the cartoons when morals, you get to the end stories, you would have, yes. they, the characters would literally stop and talk about the morals of the mm -hmm, story mm -hmm. and you would learn even things like you know how to cross the street mm -hmm. how not to tell lies mm -hmm. and you talk about the consequences in the story so it was, a, it was a way in which we learned. Um, and then when you started to talk about representation as mm -hmm. well, uh, what was it now? It was a couple of months, not a few months ago, not too long ago, when they launched the, the Little Mermaid, the movie. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think it was probably last year, or even the year before that, when the trailer came out the first time. Do you remember that video that was training? All the oh, little black girls were going, yeah. oh, she looks like me, she looks like me. So 
the importance of cultural representation contextually for us in animation is so important because mm. the world has gone local. Mm. So we need to protect and we need to tell our stories Absolutely. so that our children can connect. We already have a problem with preserving our history. So for me, to have local content in that medium that is so powerful and so easy for people to connect with. Absolutely. And it's not just about kids, it's for all ages. Like, yeah. I still love watching cartoons. I know. Um, okay. The entire Disney collection of old movies for me, sometimes I just binge watch and I want to watch them and Over they're and just movies. beautiful Absolutely. stories, right? <laughs> so I, I'm so excited for the topic today yeah. because animation, storytelling, the future for our children, what they get to interact with. I mean, a lot of questions to ask. Absolutely. How are you quickly? Yeah, so for me, I'm going to, well, as a person, I actually love animations, except the animes, those um, Asian and Korean mm. ones. I don't like those ones, right? But then when we talk about the, Dis the ones and lines of Disney, um, what, what was, what's that popular one? Now? Dreamworks. Moana. Oh, Moana, yes, yes, yes. I love, love, love Moana. them. Mm -hmm. And then I'm talking from... Being a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. I love the fact that animation helps with interactive storytelling, right? And it also encourages like critical thinking in children, problem so increases their problem solving skills as well, and things like that. And also, I have just realized that when the children watch these things, they're able to then immerse themselves. Unfortunately, these days, like you said, we now have stories or you know characters that are that portrayed in lines that we don't want our children to tow one you know but it's not taking away the experience and what it is that animation actually does mm. for the kids so i'm actually very excited and i can't wait to hear from Damola today on and that day. was called never ending story okay ah, never ending story remember <laughs> i will go and look for it i know watch her you see no vest <laughs> Dami Lola, so, <laughs> is an accomplished animation director and producer currently serving as the CEO and creative director of um, Smith's right? Animation Studios, which she founded in 2010. Under her leadership, Smith has become one of the leading animation companies in Africa, earning recognition as one of the top two animation companies in Nigeria, according to the EY Industry Report 2019. With a focus on 3D animation, Smith has successfully um, completed numerous projects for various clients and is currently working on creating children's content, hallelujah, for television and web. And we are super excited to be having our hosting, Dami Lola, but she's joining us via Zoom. Unfortunately, she couldn't come into the studio. We'll bring her for a part two. We know that one for yeah. sure. But thank you so much, Dami Lola, for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, this is an interesting conversation. I was just telling my co anchors here, I said, see, when Damilola, when I met Damilola many years ago, and she was telling me about the dream of animation and all of that, I said, if I had known, she would have just bought shares in the company. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So imagine if I had bought shares in the company by now, eh, I would have been very, 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 very wealthy. I'll be sitting in the bank and just counting out my dollars, but thank you so much for joining us, Dami. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, and that would have been a great investment. Personally. I'm telling you, I, I think we will need to revisit mm -hmm. that conversation. <laughs> let's, let's find a way to invest. But Dami, you are one person that, I, like, it, it was strange to me that somebody that was just coming out of school and was saying, this is what I want, from day one, you wanted to do animation right and it's almost looking like you know truly truly there is we're seeing a trajectory of you know growth in the animation industry especially in nigeria because I, I didn't used to like all those pencil thing that they would draw and they say it's animation you can't compete with the kind of technology that is being um used globally for storytelling and what we were doing then it was almost like caricature and mediocre but people like you decided you know what we're going to put in everything bring out excellent quality content for children and i love your direction because i've always said it that we're complaining about what our children are being fed what are we doing to ensure that we start to control the narrative that is being exposed to our children you know so for that i say thank you because it's not an easy venture I know that I do a lot of kids' events, and they will tell you that there's no ROI when it comes to children's events. So um, even getting funding for those kinds of um, projects, you know, it's a tough thing. But you know what? Generally, in your assessment, from when you started in animation till now, you know, what has been the journey like? 
and what is you know what is it currently looking at? Where are we? Where are we right now? Before we talk about the future. So thank you so much again for having me. Um, animation has been very interesting over the last few years. Um, we started the company 13 years ago, and when we started, there wasn't an industry at all. People didn't understand what we were trying to do. But over the last few years, we've seen a lot of growth you know, within the space here in Nigeria, and also globally, a lot of interest in African animation now, particularly in Nigerian animation, has really picked up over the years, and we're really grateful for that. I think um, people want to hear that our place, when they hear you know, stories from us creators from Nigeria, which is very important. I think we have a lot of stories as Africans, you know, we've always, storytelling is something that, that comes to us naturally from our grandparents, you know, telling us stories back in the day, you know, under trees and all that, to so where we are now, over the but then you create stories through now you through even our entertainment industry and through the music. I think now is now time for animation. When I talk to people, I say they have, have been here 13 years, they haven't been a better time to be in animation than right now because right now there's so much going on. Um and animation is so vast and diverse. Yes, you know, we are focusing on you know, kids' content, but every, almost every single aspect of you know, entertainment is touched by animation. Um we have some couple movies that are coming out this year. All those movies are, you know, animated movies, even though they don't, you know, perceive that way. They are VFX movies, their um, um, content and all that. But at the same time, it's still, you know, the same animation process. So it, again, animation is here to stay. Um, in education, now we're seeing quite a number of um, applications for that for kids because again, kids have different ways of learning. Some are visual learners, and being able to have content for them is also very crucial as well. Too. So it's it's really an exciting time right now for animation. Um, currently, you know how the industry is going. I'm really excited that you know we stayed because absolutely 13 years. That's no joke. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so um, I would ask, right, you, I, I like that you said um, when you're now exploring animation using African content, and we know that in Africa, well, up until recently, we do not necessarily explore sensitive topics and also topics like mental health issues and, you know, things like that. So I would like to ask, um, how do you think animation can actually break down these barriers and what role do you think animation can play in resilience and mental health issues for children? Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's an important topic, particularly because of the stigma that has been, you know, around in mental health, particularly in this part. I think animation gives, you know, animation has a very light-heartedness when it comes to how, you know, the story is perceived visually and all that. This is a way it can actually break through those barriers. So I think that's a really engaging topic that people can, someone, again, if you make a can pick up and say, I want to tell a story, you know, about mental health using animation directed at kids. I don't think there's anyone I know of who is, you know, focused in that area and say, okay, this is a story. I want to tell that I want to champion and I feel like I have something to say, I have a voice and animation will be a great visual medium to, to do that. I think when it comes to those kind of heavy topics, that's why having, I'm just thinking about the idea, having a short film around that is very visual and at the same time it you know, gives the you know, gives the point that needs to give will be very crucial to be able to pass that message to children. It's important that they understand you know, you know what it is and again remove that stigma because I think that's really the problem with you know, around here, the fact that there's that stigma around mental health issues, which is what we need to, you know, call so that that way the people who need the who require the help can get it, can access the help they need require, and then they can also get better. Mm. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, right, when, it, when I think animation, so education is a huge problem here in Nigeria. And I remember during COVID, right, they had like, I think it was like radio shows to help children learn. Um, storytelling is also another big thing. So everybody now today is talking about storytelling. The other day, um, someone was talking about doing a presentation. I said storytelling. Like every, you know, it's become a buzzword, yeah, yeah. storytelling. Um, but when, when I think animation and I think the ability to tell stories, it's a unique way to teach, mm -hmm. right? It, or it offers a unique opportunity to teach people. So given the realities of our own education sector and what we're facing in Nigeria today, what are your thoughts around how animation can impact the future of learning in the reality of what our education system is like today and the reality of the poverty line and children that don't have direct access to education? How can animation help? I think if animation can bridge the gap in the education, particularly even thinking about it, um, 
kids learn differently. Some kids are kinetic, some kids are auditory, some kids are visual. And for a long time, I think now with the newer schools, they're trying to bridge that gap with visual learners. But for a long time, at least me growing up as a visual learner, I struggled through you know, school with the fact that you know it was very auditory, you know, the way you know, we were taught. So I think it's important that animation, animation can play a great role in, in education because it can help break down topics, complex topics. And kids are already watching cartoons already every single day. You can't even you know pry you know the devices out of their hands currently. So imagine using that as a you know as a medium, as a tool to be able to teach complex subjects like math, you know, like biology and things like that. I think it's a great it's a great bridge that needs to that needs to happen. A few companies are already going to play in that space, but you can even go deeper to ensure that this knowledge is able to spread around and across, but that even kids in low income areas providing that access for them. I know some of the, um, some government organizations are doing some, some work in that area to ensure that we have, I think the state government is doing something to provide tabs for teachers and the likes. So I think it's important that we even drill down even deeper because animation does play a huge role and can actually break down those barriers. Again, we talk about the literacy gap, you know, currently in Nigeria, we, I believe very strongly that having videos, you know, some of the videos that some kids already watch on their tablets and the likes, that teach them numeracy, that teach them numbers and things like that. You can also have those kind of videos teaching them even deeper, you know, concepts using animation that they can easily grab, they can remember, and they can actually learn whatever it is that they're required to learn. I think animation can truly play a role in that. Absolutely. Okay, so let's quickly go run off on the break, right? When we come back from that break, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having an interesting conversation around the future of animation in storytelling and the impact on our children. Now, we have Damilola Shulesi. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Dami, me, I like to discuss finance, right, when it comes to issues around children because I know how, um, how a lot of brands they're looking at me from side eye mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you know just very few brands are very supportive when it comes to children how expensive first of all if we say for instance let's just say that we want to do a movie like little mermaid but tell our nigerian story and make it our own that is not still like a foreign story and all of that but it's going to have that same standard of production everything and all of that how how affordable is it or how <laughs> what are we looking at in terms of figures and numbers because you know i've heard people say that see this tiny a friend of mine i, I think I, I i connected her to you that does the kill away time bender something something she when she tells me how much they do the i say ah, ah. <laughs> you know <laughs> so <laughs> so tell me you know because we we are complaining that we don't have quality content right we and our children are constantly um um flooded or bombarded with these high quality productions so if we really want to right change the face of animation especially for the african continent for children we also also have to match that level of production how easy will it be for animators and producers and content creators to do that. So animation is expensive, like you said. So that's one of the major challenges, and I think that's even one of the challenges you know, locally here in Nigeria because the investors are already used to the non-Yoruba mod uh, model, and animation costs what almost four times the budget and takes even way longer. So in Nollywood movie, you're looking at maybe two months there about to wrap up production, and animation you're looking at two years. So it's like. The numbers, you know, doesn't it doesn't add up for them because they're like I can turn out how many couple of movies, you know, within that in the same period of time. So that's one of the major challenges that we have in the industry. The fact that um, local investors are not readily, you know, interested in animation currently because of you know, the cost of it and also how long it takes. But again, um, as as um, as a company, we've tried to be very innovative around, you know, how we've approached that over the years and be very creative. Our time there was a time when we focus very solely on 
um, on content for brands and agencies and we did ads for a long time. Now we're moving to content and we're finding many creative ways to be able to you know, fund our budget. One of the ways we're doing is actually looking international. So going to the market has been one of the things you know that we've done very consistently in the last three years, going to international markets, we're able to seek partners, co-producers, co-financiers you know, to come together and you know and make the projects that we want to make happen. So I think that's one of the major challenges is actually the you know, the finance and raising that finance. You mentioned it to Mami. I don't have the exact word for it to Mami, but any for Disney, you know, Pixel movie, animated movie they're about is costing you close to two hundred million dollars. So that's a lot of money. So hmm. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's a lot of money, and I mean, you sort of hit the nail on the head in terms of the challenges. So for me, the question then becomes, how do we sell it, mm. right? Because anybody who's going to put their money behind that kind of animation that's telling an African story, mm. the ROI, I imagine, is a very important conversation, and the ability to distribute that then becomes another conversation. Because if you sort of think about it, where in that phase where it's now Nigeria to the world, right? Our music is going places, um, our food, our fashion is going places. So how can we take, what are the possibilities for distributing these stories? And given that you started to do a lot of work outside of Nigeria, what is the appetite like? To say I want you know African or Nigerian animated stories. If I give you that money today, is there a market for it outside of Nigeria? Yes, actually, um, yes, actually, this is actually one of the reasons why I say that you know this is the best time to be in animation because now the world is looking and saying we want to hear from you as African creators. We want to hear stories. I think this month alone, there are about three different big productions: one on Netflix, one on Disney Plus, and another one on Cartoon Network. That are all done by African creators and even Nigerian creators. So right now, the world is listening and saying we want to hear diverse stories. We want to hear stories from around the world. We don't just want to be in our box anymore. And we believe that diversity of stories actually helps everyone, you know, have a more robust, you know, entertainment, you know, palette and the like. So this is actually one of the best times they want to hear these are stories. And as Africans has an untapped, I think there's some other day we're making a joke in the office that we saw another production online that was about um, a remake. I'm sure it's like the fourth or fifth time they're remaking that particular story. I'm like, why are you remaking this story four or five times when you can, when there's still a wealth of stories, you know? here on the continent of, of Africa that hasn't even been explored in any way, shape or form. We have our folk tales. Um, yeah. One of our production uh, is highly based on you know, on the Japa stories. We have so many. If you go to every tribe, there are over 250 plus you know tribes in, in Nigeria and every single one of them has stories, folk tales that have been passed down from generation to generation. And sometimes, like I'm looking at my kids now, no one is telling sitting them down by any fireplace telling them those stories. Those stories, so that they do not die, have to be animated, so that the next set of generations, those stories live on, you know, in animation. And we have so many of them across Nigeria, where we have, and across Africa. There, I think in in um, in uh, Ghana they have, you know, Anansi in South Africa. There, there are just so many of these folk tales you know, that need to be told through animation. I believe animation can actually drive those those lessons, those morals. You know, that our grandparents try to use these stories to teach us back in the day. We can actually use animation to to tell our kids some of the stories. Okay, thank you, Dami. So um, I know that with animation, it's becoming an increasingly um, realistic world, right? But then I would also want to ask, what, um, what do I call it now? What ethical considerations are animators considering when it comes to creating these stories? Because we've said that, you know, we're beginning to see a lot of, I mean, the other day, my daughter was watching something on Nickelodeon, and then <laughs> we saw two teenagers that said they were gay. And she, I saw the way she paused and, you know, looked at me like, okay, I, I mean, I was lost at that point myself. So what ethical considerations are animators, or you as an animator, what, are, what ethical considerations are you putting in place to ensure that children, I mean, content like that are not um, publicized? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I think um, every, every filmmaker, every animator lives within an ecosystem. So the ecosystem where you know, the kind of show that your daughter was watching, you know, has in many ways normalized that you know, that kind of lifestyle. So definitely those kind of things, you know, go. But again, for us here in Nigeria, the laws are very clear as regards where, where the government stands as regards those issues. And as law-abiding citizens, will definitely follow. And I also have my own personal convictions as regards you know those kinds of things. So I think it's important that again, it's every filmmaker will have to make that decision 
you know, what we other others do, what kind of stories we want to tell, what kind of stories we want to push. I think for me, I'm very, very focused on telling, you know, historical stories, telling folk tales. I think it's very important that we share some of those stories. We have, you know, this world and depth of stories that needs to be explored, you know, as Africans. I'm very passionate about telling, you know, about our African history, but it's because, in the, again, in the last few years, history has been taken out of our schools and without knowing your past, without knowing where you come from, it's very difficult for you to project into the future. So I think it's important that kids know the story. I think it's also important that you, know, you also reflect the values that you have also, you know, as you know, as an individual in whatever stories you tell. So I'm also passionate, you know, about telling because I'm also very passionate about you know, big worlds, fantasies and the like. So just like in the cartoons I watch as a child filled me with hopes and dreams, you know, I want them to do the same thing for the next generation, you to fill them with hopes, for them to know that yes, you know, whatever it is they want to achieve in life, you know, they can do that. Mm. I was gonna tell you know, that that who they pay money. Let me tell you the story of you know, the watch. No, but you know, I wanted to ask because it's I like the fact that you said that you're concerned about history and folklore, about folklore yeah. and all. But in our days, right? Tales by Moonlight was yeah. a thing. But I I want to know what your thoughts are around today's child mm. as a consumer of content. How do we make those stories interesting, interesting for, for them? them. Thank you. Because it's old school. Yeah. Now you're competing mm. with <laughs> the likes of Paw Patrol. I mean, there's just so many things, right? Yeah. And the quality and the standard. I mean, we're at the point of AR, VR. These kids are way ahead of us, right? So how are we going to tell these stories in a way that they actually want to sit still and watch? Because I've gotten to the point now where I think that my son actually watches TV. Like, he hasn't experienced TikTok before. But he doesn't have the patience to sit through a whole episode. So he's literally, I'm fast forwarding halfway through, I've clicked over to something else. How do we make these stories captivating, even via an animation? Yes. So I think when it comes to telling our, you know, our history and our culture through animation, I think one of the key things is that you know what this you know um, topic is is hidden on, which is storytelling. We have to ensure that we we drive that home, you know, to the ground whereby you are able to tell stories that engage them. It's, yes, it's about the history and the culture you want to pass, but it's how do I engage them? What are the things that you know engage kids now? Is it fantasy? Is it action? Is it comedy? You have to ensure that those ingredients are filled into you know, the story you are trying to tell, so that they are. 100% engaged in whatever it is that you're telling them, which is the key. So ensuring that you're taking them through that story. And at the end of the day, they're able to see and appreciate your culture in a new light because of how you presented it to them. So I think the characters matter so much. The environment matters. You know, the lines, the dialogue is so important to ensure that it, and each of these touch points in the movie, you're able to drive home, you know, whatever it is, your point. And I think, again, we, again we're still very, you know, in the very early days of, you know, what we're doing and even some of our productions are not yet they're still they're still out they're still in, in production currently so they're not out yet but again from some of the things i think we released a couple of books two months ago and we're seeing response from people and these books are based on african history like you know queen Moremi, queen amina the great wall of winning kingdom so people are seeing kids you know engaging with some of this content and i'm like okay this is exactly what we want to do this is supposed to be a series but we said let's start let's start out with books and see how we engage the market with that and we're seeing kids responding you know as they are you as we hope that they would. And I think, again, it's just that story, ensuring that whatever it is that we're telling them, we're captivating, we're captivating them with characters that they can care and love, and then we're also captivating them with worlds and with stories that can really pull them and read them in, which is the most important thing. <laughs> So you know that this our taste by Mulai story, where would they ask you so? You know those are they say don't steal from your mother's phone. <laughs> don't do this. I want to just quickly mention that I saw a video on TikTok today. The guy said, Can you imagine? That he, he why he take put time, he said he's just he, you know almost like I dulled myself. Mm. That me that they said I should not steal from my mother's phone, not, that the person that the, whatever did something, the person has and and dummy, that is our reality, mm. right? Uh, some of our stories were stories to keep us grounded. So yeah. stories to keep us, you know, do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. Yeah. But now, you know, the way the world is, is lopsided. I was going to say to Chinelo that it is somebody that's also funding it, that would go in the direction of what yeah, the story would look like, yeah. right? Um, so how do we start to get more, so people that, ha that have some level, of, they're still at that level of moral standing, strong, whatever, and all of that, to be able to then build. Because, you see... One thing that I've always said is better I do not do it. But if I want to do it at all, I must match with Disney production. You understand? Because that is the competition that my children are, you know, that's what they're faced with. Do you understand? That's the standard they're used to. 
I mean, I saw a child. This child has never crossed the shores of this country. If this child opens their mouth to talk to you, you would think the child was born, bred, buttered in the UK. Like the... Even me. I wear their <laughs> travel. I know, do you understand? So that is their reality. And because these children are locked in front of the screen and they're seeing all of these things, so they are mimicking. They are, you know, so they are taking on some of this. And, it, and you know the thing about cartoon, it, 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 you are, you are soaking mercy. everything yes. in. So how do we start to get funders? How do we pull? Because Uti asked a very important question about attracting it. You know, so what do we need to do you know, to start bringing in? For, because what we need now, we already have the expertise. How do we pull in like funds that can match like the little mermaid kind of production really yes mm -hmm. how do we how do we pull those funds in yeah definitely i think the kids there uh, now is their the appetite is, is very high and i think the standard for animation is also as well high because they are so filled with you know bombarded every single day with content from every side and that if you do not meet you know that 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 term criteria as a creator or as an animator is impossible for you to get the kids to be there are even new shows that are so fantastic you know on some of the platforms like netflix and then i'm trying to get my kids to order and I, I know this creator this show is really good and they're like nah because they are you know so used to you know whatever it is that they want to watch and like so i think the bar and the standard is very high for you know for creators nowadays and we just have to be but i think right now where the industry is where we are as a right now we are able to meet the tools are out there you know available for us to be able to utilize the training has been you know, provided for over the last few years that we've been you know trying to engage in this in this field so i think we're again we haven't we haven't cracked that you know grass glass ceiling yet but we're very close and you know we write partnerships we write strategy to some of the things that we are also employing in, in some of our productions to ensure that we're not you know this island you know but we're seeing how we can collaborate you know, even internationally to be able to make you know the kinds of productions the kinds of quality that we want to make happen. I think for us is really finding all the right ingredients. So you have the great story, you have the partners that you require, you have the people who are able to drop the funds to, to make this happen and having all that right mixed together to actually bring you know the production that you, you truly want. And I, I think we're really close. Like awesome. we're, we're really close. So As I said again, this is the Yes, yeah, touch it be quickly anime. because I wanted to also ask career opportunities because this is also the season where a lot of people want to jackpa and all of that. And I know that most of the animators are tech driven careers which is technically the future of work right so are there real career opportunities for someone that is watching that says you know what how can i go and train with smith and how how much can i you know maybe as a startup and all of that how can i what would be my my, my take home at the end of the month right are there real career opportunities for people and you know especially in that entire value chain of an animation in in nigeria Yes, definitely. So again, as I said, this really growing. There are lots of productions that are currently, you know, ongoing in the industry, and we're we are recruiting heavily. So I think for anyone who is creative, who is you know, who is young, who is ready to you know, get into the space, this is the best time for you to start to learn. There are a couple of studios who offer trainings. There are courses you can take, you know, online or wherever to be able to get the skills that you that you require for you have to make this happen. Animation is people driven. It's one of the reasons why it's you know, expensive. You have a Pixar movie. There are over two hundred people working on that particular production. The Little Mermaid that you mentioned. If you see the cast list. <laughs> it's going on for you know for, for for minutes and minutes. So it's animation takes a lot of people to make it happen, and we need those people you know, currently in the mm. industry to be able to make that happen. So awesome. if there's anyone who's out there who has probably thinking about animation, I said this is the best time for you to, for okay. you to get So that means so somebody like me now that you know yes. do I have an, a, a chance? <laughs> oh yes <laughs> oh yes you do oh yes you do definitely so again it's about your own willingness to to want to get into the space animation is hard you know, sometimes people see you know the two or three minutes you know um, stuff that's on the tv and like oh i can do that but animation is hard but you having that willingness to say okay i want to get in i want to, i have the discipline and the drive to be able to make it happen that's you know, that's i mean they are career but you are just the thinker now Uti, with this your voice so, so, uh, Voice over. Voice over. <laughs> hey! Hey! And again, please come and pray also. Just, just, <laughs> there, are other, there are other value chains, there are voice over artists, there are all kinds of people within the space, mm. producers, there are writers, you know, quite a number of people that are required to meet, awesome. editors that, that happen. People. That's mm. a lot of you that was a lot of people on the production, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot, I, I was just thinking that, you know, there's obviously so much that, you know, you see it and it looks so. Sure, nice. but you don't know the, you don't know the amount of work that goes mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. it. So, 
200 people, if it's an epic Marvel movie, you can hey, understand it, but you don't think about it from a category. That means so we are going to write our application <laughs> and we'll send our CVs. But thank you so, so much for hanging out with us tonight. And we hope to have you live in the studio because we are, this conversation is actually quite interesting. So there are so many opportunities in there and I can see for people. Next thank you so much. Abio, next topic that is what? Careers in animation. Careers in animation. <laughs> Daddy, we'll give you your next topic. Oh. <laughs> so, plan for us. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much. So, before we go, thank you, ladies. Okay. Now, um, follow us across all our social media and follow us on thread. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can interact with us further. <laughs> Drop a comment and, more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Uti do also want to go to thread. She must open accounts. <laughs> If you missed our quote for today here it is again if you're sitting in your minivan playing your computer animated films for your children in the back seat is it the animation that's entertaining you um as you drive and listen no it is a storytelling that's why we put so much importance on story no matter uh, no amount of great animation will save a bad story I hope my voice was nice enough because I'm practicing for voiceover. Oh, voiceover. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you guys live on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.